We'll now get to hear from uh, the police chief of Lawrence Police Department, John Romero, and Daniel Johnston, who's the executive director of the Massachusetts Insurance Fraud Bureau. Good afternoon. Before Dan and I describe our program, I'd like to take a minute to talk about the history of Lawrence, Massachusetts. In 1998, Lawrence had one of the highest crime rates of any city in the state. It was known as the stolen car capital of Massachusetts, and in fact, in the entire country, it was number two per capita. By 2003, we had reduced crime by almost 45%. However, auto insurance fraud continued to be a cottage industry, costing honest policyholders in Lawrence millions of dollars a year in extra premiums. The problem was so bad that policyholders through the entire state were literally subsidizing Lawrence. So although we made tremendous progress in reducing crime, insurance fraud, especially involving personal injuries from stage auto accidents, was on a rise. In fact, the fraud was so bold that many of these accidents took place on paper only. How bad was Lawrence? Consider these facts. In 2002, when the statewide average from insurance statistics was 43 injuries for every 100 accidents, in Lawrence, there were 141 injuries for every 100 accidents, a stat that pointed out that there were multiple people in cars uh, that were staging accidents just to get the benefits. Auto thefts, too, were quite, quite higher than normal. On a statewide basis back then, only one out of 260 cars were stolen in Massachusetts. In Lawrence, one out of 25 cars were stolen. <laughs> Can this we all just added pause up to for a, a moment and, and realize what an incredible statistic that was? <laughs> you didn't want to bring your car into the city. <laughs> <laughs> this all added up to a very high insurance premiums for Massachusetts for Lawrence citizens, over $2,100 a car, when the statewide average was just over $1,100 a car. Uh, Chief referred to a cottage industry that we had built up to uh, support this fraudulent effort. 22 clinics of chiropractic or physical therapy types uh, existed. They had blossomed at that point in time about nine times the statewide average. But finding and fighting fraud in Lawrence had become elusive. Our old model of simply investigating cases uh, without geographic focus, um, but rather f uh, based on uh, third party referrals to us from the insurance industry, uh, working with the uh, state's attorney general's office. It worked well in some instances, but it wasn't doing uh, the job in the city of Lawrence. In 2003, all that changed with the death of a 65-year-old grandmother who was killed during an accident which was later determined to be staged. The Lawrence Police Department, along with the Massachusetts State Police, successfully investigated and prosecuted the individuals responsible for the accident, not only the drivers, but the passengers as well. Because someone had died in this stage accident, we had leverage. The drivers could be charged with manslaughter, and the passengers, well, they had a reason to, to uh, confess their part. After our successful investigation in that case, Dan and I realized the best strategy to address fraudulent motor vehicle accidents was to investigate them on a local level. Therefore, the Lawrence Police Department, along with the Insurance Fraud Bureau and the Essex County District Attorney, formed the first insurance fraud task force to operate on a local level. Since that time, 370 people have been arrested, including chiropractors and lawyers, for insurance fraud stemming from phony accidents in Lawrence. Stolen cars in Lawrence, which were the byproduct of the fraud, had dropped from almost 2,000 in 1999 to 341, an 83% reduction in stolen cars. And overall crime had dropped 60%, a 38-year low for the city. The early successes of the Lawrence Task Force quickly became evident as the statistics came in. Uh, the community was aware of our, our uh, presence. We had billboards. We had a lot of activity in the newspaper, and that was very important to uh, letting them know what we were doing. The 141 injuries per accident, per 100 accidents, dropped to 60 by 2004, and 52 where it sits today. The one out of every 25 cars stolen now sits at one out of 139. As we saw this unfold, we searched for other communities that were similarly, similarly situated. Uh, while nothing in the state was as bad as Lawrence, parts of Boston, Springfield, Holyoke, Lowell, Lynn, and Brockton were the next highest in the measure of, a, of injuries per 100 accidents. So we quickly um, uh, met with police departments and district attorneys for those communities and replicated the task forces there in 2004 and then seven more cities in 2005. And in virtually every case, those statistics uh, dropped dramatically. In Lawrence, where premiums averaged $2,100 in 2004, by 2008, they were less than $1,400 per car. The cumulative reduction for the 25,000 uh, 25, cars in that city is over $40 million during that period. And for all of these uh, towns where we brought this task force in Massachusetts, uh, the cumulative savings for people that buy insurance there is $450 million. Um, and this is widely um, recognized by the insurance community 
as the reason why we've been able to go to competition here in the state uh, after about 83 years, I guess, of state-made made rates. So um, in any event, Chief Mayor and I stand ready to answer any questions that you have about the program. Thank you. Bill and then Mayor. There's a uh, suggestion, um, I'm not sure whether it was, I think maybe in the site visitor's report, that the fee structure, that is the penalty that, uh, that is paid here, is maybe not uh, rigorous enough to really uh, discourage uh, those people. And I wonder if you have any recidivism rates involved here, and, and is, that a, is that a potential problem or not? Well, actually, the cases we're working on now are old cases. There are no new cases coming in. We literally eliminate insurance fraud. That's not to say there won't be an accident, where, a legitimate accident where someone's injured and they might exaggerate their injuries. But in terms of the runners and the chiropractors, the whole business that was set up has been eliminated in Lawrence. I would just add to that that uh, I mentioned the 22 clinics that were involved, uh, and there were a lot of lawyers involved with helping them do that as well. Uh, there's only four left in Lawrence now, and we haven't seen them pop up in other communities, and we measured this in, in all of the communities, and the staged accident uh, referrals that we get to our agency are dramatically down all across the state. So they're not moving from one community to the other. That's the good news. I heard a lot about uh, stolen cars in your presentation, not as much in the written, and I'm wondering, what percentage of the cases that you deal with are stolen cars versus these accidents? Well, when we started working, we were working on, on investigating uh, injury cases. Yeah. But then we, we noticed the stolen cars started dropping, and the deputy chief and I got together and said, why are stolen cars coming down? Because it was well publicized we were working on fraud, but people didn't know what fraud we were doing. So we said, you know what, let's do some stolen cars. And we started doing stolen cars, throwing them in there and putting their picture in the paper. So people knew we were doing it, but they didn't know what we were doing. So that's what happened. No, I, I think that's important because the applicability of your task force addressing stolen cars is even higher than the applicability of you know, bad accidents. It was really easy to fake accidents. If you yeah. want your car stolen because you're, you're, you were paying a high uh, you know, monthly cost or your car wasn't worth, you couldn't sell it for what it's worth, you would say you, you go to Lawrence and it was stolen. People believe you. <laughs> <laughs> yes, uh, David. In terms of replication, are there many other communities around the country that have problems of uh, insurance fraud that are on this kind of scale? Yes, I've been involved with the insurance fraud fighting community nationally and internationally. This problem does exist all over the place. The, uh, the difference that we've found here is that sometimes working with the state prosecutors, uh, they tend to have uh, thresholds as to what kind of cases they'd like to do, and they all go to grand jury and superior court. But working with police departments, bringing these cases into district court, I think is the real difference in the model that we've got here. And we, have, we are trying to take this out to the different uh, communities. I've spoken on it many times nationally, and uh, there's obviously more to go. There's 42 other insurance fraud bureaus like mine in the rest of the country. They don't all have the same uh, resources or, uh, or interests, but they do exist. Well, I have a follow-up question. Uh, sort of to the extent this is based on CompStat and your years in New York, Chief, where do you think this could go next? You, you've taken it to stolen cars, but it seems applicable not just around insurance fraud and stolen cars, but other issues as well, and I wonder if you thought about where it might go. Well, I mean, we use the concept principle. Again, I, I, I brought it from New York. I was on a receiving end in New York. Now I get to be on the other end. Mm -hmm. More However, fun, right? Yeah. And, uh, <laughs> but uh, it's thinking out of the box. I mean, we, we look at all our crime in Lawrence, and that's why we were successful reducing crime by 60%, because it was a lot of, uh, every crime was up in Lawrence, and we needed to look at it uh, and deal with the underlying issues and, and think out of the box and put the right people in it, that's the other thing. The people we, that Dan and I put into this assignment were the right people. Uh, they're here in the audience now, but they're the ones that made this thing work. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Well, I have to tell you, I, there were very exciting statistics, and the fact that you were able to solve these problems, and what we found is that there had always been a statewide task force, but it was really the local focus that made the difference. And I, I want to congratulate you. I was just wondering, if how can you take what you learned to other localities? I've heard you've done it in Massachusetts. Can you take it out of the state? I, I think we can. I think we can go out to other locations and say, if you address it on a local level, look at what the problem is in your city or, uh, or your region, you can address it because it's, it's, it varies. There are different uh, models of this, this fraud, and you need to lo localize it, I think, to be most effective. Great. Well, thank you very thank much. You. It was very, very interesting.